Working as a 911 dispatcher means you hear a lot of things that can be hard to shake off. But there's one call I got a few years back that has stayed with me in a way no other call has. It was just past 3 a.m. on a chilly October night when I received what I assumed would be a routine emergency call. It was quiet, only the hum of the monitors around me and the occasional murmur of other dispatchers. Then my phone rang. 911, what's your emergency? I asked, ready to type in details as I always did. Silence. Hello? This is 911. Can you tell me your emergency? Finally, I heard it. A faint, fragile voice. The voice of an older woman trembling with fear. There's someone in my house, she whispered, barely loud enough for me to hear. Her words were halting, each one carefully controlled, like she was trying desperately not to let the person in her house hear her. Ma'am, what's your address? I asked calmly, though I felt a slight chill run down my spine. She provided the address, and I quickly dispatched officers to the location. Can you tell me where you are in the house? I continued, hoping to keep her talking and reassured until help arrived. I'm... I'm in the closet, downstairs, she whispered, her voice so thin and shaky that I had to strain to catch every word. I heard him come down the stairs, but now he's just standing there. Where exactly is he standing, ma'am? I asked, trying to keep my voice steady. My fingers hovered over the keyboard, ready to update the officers with any new information. She paused as if she was too afraid to even speak. Then she whispered, right outside the closet door. I felt a pulse of dread. It was as if I could feel her fear through the phone. Stay as quiet as you can, ma'am, I told her. Officers are on their way. Just stay hidden, okay? She didn't respond, but I could hear her breathing shallow and fast. I listened closely, trying to hear anything else. And then I picked up a faint sound in the background, a soft, steady creaking, like footsteps moving slowly on old floorboards. Are you still with me, ma'am? I whispered, fearing she might have hung up or worse. Yes, she breathed out, so quiet it was barely a sound. Then suddenly there was a scratching noise. I froze. It was like someone was running their nails down the outside of the closet door. I could hear her begin to sob, her breath catching in her throat as she tried not to make any noise. I whispered again, Ma'am, hold tight, the officers are close. Just then there was another sound, faint but clear and unmistakably chilling. A man's voice, a deep, slow whisper, like he was right next to the phone. He said, I know you're in there. The line went dead, I stared at my screen my heart pounding, and immediately radioed the officers to hurry. They were only about two minutes away, but I knew every second would feel like an eternity. I watched the timer on the call. Three minutes, five, eight. It felt like hours until I finally got confirmation that they'd arrived. The officers searched the house from top to bottom. It was a small old house that had clearly been empty for a long time. They found no sign of forced entry, no disturbed furniture, no footprints nothing. The house was empty. I was baffled. I asked the lead officer on scene if they'd seen the woman or if there was any evidence that someone had been there. Are you sure that was the right address? He asked, sounding as confused as I was. Because there's no one here. The house is abandoned. Looks like it has been for years. I confirmed the address, but they insisted that the house had been vacant for decades. I went back through the call records looking for some kind of explanation. But the call had come from that exact address, a landline number. It didn't make sense. My supervisor thought maybe it had been a prank, but I knew. I knew in my gut that the terror in that woman's voice was real. I couldn't stop thinking about the man's voice, the one I'd heard in that split second before the line disconnected. It wasn't just what he said that disturbed me. It was the cold, matter-of-fact way he'd whispered, I know you're in there. It was like he'd known I was listening, too. The next day, I did some digging into the address. What I found still haunts me. About 20 years ago, a woman had lived in that house, an older lady who kept mostly to herself. One night, she called 911, saying she heard someone in her house. By the time officers arrived, they found her dead in her closet. The door scratched and splintered as if she'd tried to claw her way out. The case was never solved they never found any signs of an intruder. The number that had called me that night, 
it was the same number listed for that house 20 years ago. After that night, I asked to be reassigned to the day shift. I don't know who or what called me or why I was the one to answer, but I can still hear the fear in that woman's voice. And sometimes, late at night, when the house is quiet, I hear that low, chilling whisper in my mind. I know you're in there. It was supposed to be a simple drive. I was heading home after a long day, taking the quiet back roads to avoid traffic. It was late, around midnight, and the road was empty, just a straight line stretching into the darkness, flanked by dense trees. The night felt especially thick and oppressive, the kind where every sound seems muffled and the air itself feels heavy. As I drove, I started to get that prickling feeling on the back of my neck, the one that tells you you're not alone. But I brushed it off as nerves. I kept my eyes on the road, trying to ignore the uncomfortable sensation. And then, my headlights caught something on the side of the road. It was a figure, barely visible, standing on the shoulder just beyond the reach of my high beams. I couldn't make out any details, just the vague outline of a person, unmoving. I felt my stomach twist, but I told myself it was probably just a hitchhiker or someone with car trouble. I kept driving, trying to put it out of my mind, but as I rounded the next bend, I saw them again. The same shadowy figure standing in the exact same position, just off the road, as if waiting. My grip on the steering wheel tightened, and a chill crept down my spine. I was sure I had passed that spot already. It couldn't have been the same person unless they had somehow gotten ahead of me. I picked up speed, my heart thudding. The road stretched out in front of me, and I kept glancing in my mirrors, half expecting to see the figure following me. But the road was empty behind me. Then, as I approached the next curve, there it was again. The figure standing on the side of the road, just within the shadows. This time, I could make out a bit more. Its head was tilted, watching me pass, its form slightly hunched, and its face, I couldn't see a face, just a dark, empty void where a face should have been. Panic took over, and I floored the gas pedal, desperate to get away. The trees seemed to close in around me, the road narrowing, and every time I thought I was putting distance between myself and the figure, it would appear again, always just ahead, always waiting. Finally, I saw a sign indicating a turnoff ahead, leading to the highway. Relief flooded over me. I'd be safe once I was back on a well-lit road with other cars around. But as I turned onto the ramp, my headlights flickered. For a brief second, everything went dark. When they came back on, the figure was standing directly in the middle of the road in front of me. I swerved, nearly losing control, skidding onto the shoulder and stopping inches from a tree. I looked back, heart pounding, expecting to see the figure right next to my car. But the road was empty. I didn't wait to catch my breath. I sped onto the highway and didn't look back until I was safely in the lights of my neighborhood, feeling the adrenaline finally start to fade. I've taken that road hundreds of times since, but I never saw the figure again. But every now and then, late at night, I get the same prickling feeling, like something's watching from the edge of the shadows, waiting for me to come back. <laughs>